Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create a custom object that follows your player around. And this is really using the NPC functionality. So as this player moves around, you'll see this thing I created. It's, I call it the abomination. <laughs> and wherever it goes, this thing's going to follow it around. And what's cool about this is that it's using the NPC navigation. It's not relying on traditionally how we move things around. It's kind of cool. And you can have any kind of object following your player around. So anyway, I'll be back in just a minute and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, I'm back and we're ready to get started on this. This is gonna take a little bit longer than usual because I wanna be sure to explain everything. I feel like the code is a little bit complicated just because it covers options and maps and some other things. And it's we're working with NPCs and that's all new this year. There's a few things that we need to get started and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom object. And this is very interesting to me because this object that we're going to create will be able to pass as a Fortnite character, which is different from how we normally do things. So anyway, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to Blueprint Class. And notice when this opens up, we have a building prop, a static mesh, and this is not going to be the same as a creative prop. This isn't, notice it's going to be of the actor class, right? So we're going to go select and I'll just leave it called new blueprint. We're in the actor class. See the parent class is actor. And I'm just gonna go add and I'm gonna get a sphere. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit control D and make another sphere. We'll leave it called sphere one. We're gonna scale it down to like 0.1 and then we're gonna give it a color like we'll give it blue. And then we're gonna go control D and copy it. Then I'm going to select that first sphere and we're just going to try to make some primitive eyes here. It's obviously not going to be perfect here. And we'll just back this in here like that. You know what I'll do is I'll just copy the location on this one. Come here and then I'll paste it. And then I can just move it over so you can you know, spend some time coming up with something that looks better than this. And let's just go ahead and add a, a nose here. So I'll just get a cube and then we're going to go ahead on the its details panel and scale that down to like 0.1. And then we'll just pull that out here. Why don't I see the cube? Is it too small? I guess it was too small. So just play around with these structures and get them however you like them. The most important thing is that these all need to be parented to each other. So I'm just going to drag this on top of that and this on top of that and that's on top of that. Oops, that's on top of that. So they're in a stair step like that because that way when we move this, they'll all go with it. Okay, and that's our custom object. So the next thing we're going to do is create a custom behavior. So that's going to be over here with our verse explorer. So I'm going to click there, click here on project, my project, add new verse file. And we're going to pick this NPC behavior basic. And I'm just going to call it my behavior basic and go create. And it should pop in right there. When we click into this, I already have the code written. So I'm going to go ahead and select all that and paste in my code. And we're going to get an error here because we haven't created our creative device yet. What we're doing is we're going to create a creative device, which we haven't done yet. And then we're going to tag it and I'll show you how to do that. But this is all essentially about tagging. So I'll put a link to a tutorial in the description on how to tag. But this is what we have to do is actually go out into the game, find our creative device. And once we actually find it, then we can reference it. Once we reference it, then we can access whatever functions or data we want inside of it. But we can't make a direct reference from here to our creative device. We have to go tag it and then bring it in. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a reference to our NPC. And it's important, this can be confusing because an NPC, I should put, can pass as a fort character. Because if you click here, we hit control and go to get agent, you'll see it's talking about returns the agent associated with this NPC behavior. But then if we come back here and we click get fort character, read what it says here. 
fells if in agent is not a fort character. So what I learned from this is that an NPC is a fort character, can pass for a fort character. I did not know that. So once we get that reference to our NPC, we can call get Fortnite interface, and then we can get what's called the navigable, get navigable, that's a weird word, for this character here. And then with this, we can use that to target that location of where our agent is. So we just loop through this. It just keeps looping. And we don't have any code in here to break this, so once this starts looping, there's no way out of it right now. So anyway, that's all there is to this. So this exists in our NPC behavior script, and this is what we're going to access next. So the next thing we're going to do, we've, if we come back in here, look what we've created so far. We have our custom object. We have our behavior, our NPC behavior script. And the next thing we're going to do is create a what they call an NPC character definition. So I'm going to right click go into AI and go to NPC character definition. And this is almost like a, I don't know, like a, a structure or almost like a, a data table where we're just holding references to the data that we're going to use for our NPC character. So up here where it says NPC character type, you have a choice to make it a guard, wildlife, or custom, and we're going to go custom. And our behavior is going to be our verse behavior. And when I click here under behavior, then I can pick my my behavior script, the script that we just created here. And then down here, because we put custom up here, where it says cosmetic look, I can switch to custom character, and I can choose my new blueprint right here. Now this character doesn't have any animation, so I'm just going to leave that blank. But we're done entering this character definition in and we're done with that. So now we have our custom object, we have our behavior script, we've set our character definition, and now we need to get a character spawner, an NPC character spawner. So I'll search for NPC and it's right here. And I want to show you something to highlight the functionality of this. You notice I have this right here in the scene, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this way over here. I'm going to have it spawn because what we're going to do is have it teleport over to where our player character is. So I'm putting the, the spawner way over there. And with the spawner still selected, you need to set our behavior script. So here I'm going to go my behavior, that we our script that we did. And then here I'm going to select that character definition. And then we're done. we're done there with setting it. And I only need one spawner, so now I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now the last thing that we have to do is create our character device and this is where the meat and potatoes is of this whole thing. I'm going to come up to my project, come up here to Verse Explorer, click on my project, right click, and we're going to create a new Verse device and I'm going to just call this my creative device. Just like that and we'll go create. Save. And it's going to pop in right down here. I'm getting an error for some reason. I think it's because of this here. So I'm not going to worry about that. We're going to build the rest of the code right now. So this is what I where I'm going to spend the most time just explaining what's kind of going on with this code because honestly it can be very confusing. So I have it already written and I put some extra notes in here hopefully to make this all make sense. When you're learning verse, I'll presume that it's all kind of like math, you know, you learn arithmetic, and then you learn algebra, and then you learn geometry, and then trigonometry, and then calculus. It's a little bit like that. All of this code assumes knowledge of other things, and so if you don't understand those other things, then this gets really problematic. But here's where we create our tag, and like I said, I'll leave a link to the description about tags if you don't know how to do that. But essentially, this name will appear in the editor, and we can tag this creative device with this reference called device reference. In our behavior here, we're going to tell it to go looking for this word device reference, right? So we're going to tag our creative device and then when it, this code gets triggered, when we call get game device, which is actually right down here to create a reference, it's going to go find that creative device because we've tagged it with that name. 
and then we'll be able to access whatever methods or functions are inside of here. And we have three primary methods in here. So there's that. And then we have a at editable for our player spawner, for our NPC spawner. Then we created a, a variable of the agent type. It's an option type too. So we set it to false, meaning that it's empty. And this is going to hold a reference to the last player that spawned into the game. So this code should work in a multiplayer game because it's just going to keep kind of a running total of everybody that last spawned in. Now here's where it's easy to get tripped up. We're creating a map. And the reason this is confusing is of the agent type. But there's two agents in here. And it's not clear which one is which because we have to specify it with the type. So we have agent, agent, and it's like, well, what's going on here? So here what we're going to do with this map is we're going to pair our spawned NPCs to our spawned players. And both players and AI, or NPC I should put in here actually, NPC, are of the agent type. So this here is called the key, and this is called the value. And so to access the value, we need the key. So in this case, the NPC reference is going to be here, the key, and the player reference is going to be the value. So we're, inter we're going to be interested in getting the player reference. That's what we're interested in getting. But we're going to use the NPC key to get to that reference. So this can be very, very confusing. So here the game starts. We create a reference to our player spawner. It's a spawn event. We subscribe to on player spawn down here. It's going to take in our agent that spawns in, our player. And then we're going to get a reference to its Fortnite character here. And then we're going to get its location. And we're going to tell the NPC spawner to teleport to where our Fortnite character is. We're going to go ahead and set this variable with a reference to our last player spawned, right? Then after that, we're going to go ahead and call our NPC spawner to spawn in. Once that spawns in, that's going to trigger this up here, and it's going to call right down to here to when our NPC spawns in. And it's going to take in the NPC reference, and notice it's an agent, same as a port character starts out. And it's going to come in as an agent. We're going to say if there is something in that container, and there should be because we're putting something in it, then go ahead and assign that to player agent. And this is the most key line of code right here, this line right here. Because this is how we are setting our map. And this can be very confusing if you don't know how maps work, but essentially this is the player reference, and this is going to be our value. And our, here we're assigning the NPC reference as the key. And then we're putting it in this map that we've created up here. So this is where we set our map. Once this is set, we can use the NPC reference to get our player reference. So every time a player spawns in, an NPC is going to spawn in, then they're going to be linked to each other and stored as a reference in our map. And then we have another method here. This method is what we're going to be accessing from over here. So that's why we need to create a reference, do this whole business here of tag our creative device, our verse device, and then get a reference to it because we want access to this method. So this method here takes in the NPC reference and then we create a variable of the option type again. And here is where we reference our player reference now. So we we're sending it, we're calling from over here, right? Once this starts, we get a reference to our our NPC player and then we get access to all its stuff that it does. And remember, it can pass as a fort character, and that's why this works. Once that all goes through, then this starts the looping process that essentially allows the NPC to follow along our player character. But it's here where we get a reference to our game device, and here is where we call that method on our creative device here. What are we calling it with? We're calling it with a reference to our NPC. So we're sending the key over now. We call this method here, and we're sending in our NPC reference, and we're sending back our player reference right there. So we return a reference to the player here. It's worth taking your time trying to go through this line by line 
and understand exactly what's happening because it will help you immensely if you understand what's going on. If you're confused about just one line of code, it can throw everything off because you fundamentally might misunderstand what's actually happening. So we call over there and we get agent target and that tells our NPC where to target to. And that's all the code. And when this whole thing ends, this is going to be a print string, but we won't see it because the game won't end. So we'll see it when we start the game up again. And that's the whole enchilada right there. So the only thing we have left to do is just tag our creative device. So let me go back in here to the editor and we'll finish up here. Let me go ahead and build it. Build verse code. Our creative device has come in. I'll put it right there. And see it's looking for a player spawner. So I'll put that in there. And it's looking for an NPC and I'll put that in there. And then we just need to tag it. So we'll go add and we'll go tag here. And then once that's selected, we come down here to edit, click on edit. And it's this, that's where we're going to tag it with device reference. And believe it or not, that's it. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and push all these changes and I'll come back as soon as it's done loading up. Okay, so I'm back and let's see if this works. Now remember, I put the NPC spawner way over there. So if everything's working, it should pop up right over by where I'm at right here. So let's hit start and see if this works. Oh, there he is right there. And see, wherever I go, he follows me. Interesting, huh? That's pretty much how it works. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I hope I didn't over explain things. Anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.